So it is a method of uh, psychotherapy is a, a method of um, treatment of uh, mental disorders by using psychological methods. Okay, uh, so I'll just uh, show you some of the slides related to the psychotherapy and other therapies also. Okay, so psychotherapy is a method of treatment. As I said, it's a treatment of mental disorders. Okay, so this was originated from Greek and it is derived from two Greek words, psyche, which means breath in Greek and spirit or soul and therapia, which means healing or medical treatment. So it is mainly a conversation uh, which involves listening and talking with those in trouble and with an aim of helping them to understand and resolve their problem and you know it is uh, it is mainly on uh, helping uh, or uh, like um, it is based um, uh, it is mainly a conversation which involves listening and uh, talking therapy the person say so supportive therapy is uh, like psychotherapy generally is mainly involving the clients Okay, involving the clients and having a face-to-face uh, -face interaction. Uh, if the uh, and also uh, it it was said by me itself many times that uh, uh, whatever we are going to kind of help the client, first we have to see whether the client is in orientation or whether the client has a proper insight. If in certain certain mental disorders, the client may lose totally uh, totally insight or he will not the particular client will not have insight or orientation on many things. So it is sometimes it is necessary that the client or the patient is to be on medication and so in this much of medication the treatment mode of particular um, days of treatment is over then uh, suppose the client is uh, like getting into a problem is getting better and is able to have orientation then we start off with the counseling okay so in that way uh, we will start an uh, interaction with the client talking with the client okay so all these are related with the uh, with psychotherapy we are doing psychotherapy and in psychotherapy we have different therapies okay so that is what we are going to learn now so uh, like spoken conversation is a mostly used form of psychotherapy uh, i'll repeat this uh, when you are talking therapy or interacting face to face contact you are helping the client to speak or to open up all these are related to psychotherapy and also uh, this is used by the therapist and uh, music drama written word narrative all these can also be used okay psychotherapy is also known as a talking uh, treatment because it is generally based on talking to the therapist or group of people with similar problems okay if it is a group therapy we we have a homogeneous we have a homogeneous group where we interact with each and every member or the member has uh, an opportunity to speak on um, uh, particular uh, whatever uh, like you know uh, the particular uh, particular client wants to speak on so here ventilation takes place catharsis takes place here the client is open to share his feelings okay so this is what uh, psycho, uh, we, uh, that psychotherapy is. So there are mainly three types of mental health professionals found most often in mental who perform psychotherapy and this is uh, the psychotherapy is conducted by clinical psychologists, psychiatric social workers and psychiatrists. Okay, uh, so we also have uh, the, the those who are committed towards uh, conducting counseling sessions to the for, to the client. Uh, you have the you can it is uh, that you can conduct uh, psychotherapy also. Okay, or others included uh, can be clinical psychologists, psychiatrists. They, these people are those who can conduct different therapies towards the client or those the person who are in distress or any emotional situations. So here we learn, uh, we start with the psycho supportive therapy. The first therapy is about supportive therapy. So this as in the very beginning itself, I used to say that the supportive uh, uh, system is very, very important. Uh, whoever the client is or uh, whatever the situation is, uh, the support system is to be very strong. The client should be supported uh, in different ways, maybe uh, with a pat, uh, just a pat on the shoulder or encouraging or motivation. All these type of different uh, support system will help the client to enhance the situation, enhance towards the worst situation or uh, the condition in a better way okay so support is therapy is most commonly practiced type of therapy. it is indicated for the people with uh, the, those uh, uh, the uh, patient the clients where we uh, for those we can give the 
psychotherapy as chronic mental disorders include with people with delusional disorder these are the disorders we learned in the last class okay delusion disorder schizophrenia schizophrenia as, as we discussed that it is a severe mental illness but after the treatment once uh, uh, the part, uh, particular patient is getting better and it is referred by the psychiatrist that counseling session can be conducted we can conduct psychotherapy and also with severe affective disorders or anxiety disorders all the, for these all type of disorders psychotherapy is a, a successful one and um, uh, the uh, the counselors can conduct in a better way so supportive ther therapy what is supportive therapy it is a, a form of long term psychotherapy that aims to optimize patients functioning promote their autonomy enhance their self esteem and lessen their anxiety and distress so you all will be you are all aware that isn't it whatever help uh, if is given by a professional uh, uh, person uh, it is not that within 45 minutes or within a session uh, we will get a good result but it is a continuous process it is a psychotherapy or giving therapy or uh, helping the person is a continuous process because uh, the particular person or the particular client has to feel that okay now he is okay with the situation now the now uh, the particular person can cope up with the situations or can handle the situation in a better way or um, uh, the, there is no need of any external help or the confidence is developing so till then the psychotherapy is conducted so it is a continuous therapy and mainly it promotes the autonomy of the client enhance the self esteem lessen the anxiety and distress okay so uh, uh, just uh, there's a definition by woman supportive psychotherapy as a substitute form of treatment it is a substitute form of treatment okay and equips patients with the psychological functions that they either lack or possess insufficiently and wherever there is a difficulty or the client uh, the particular patient after the medication is not able to cope up with the situation or still the particular person has uh, not developed any sort of uh, confidence or self esteem uh, the supportive psychotherapy is there to boost the particular person so here the therapist plays an active role in helping the patient to improve their social function that is what we were discussing and coping strategies and overall aim is to help the patient to achieve an optimum level of functioning by optimizing their adaptation to living and that is very very important as uh, we learned that uh, psychotherapy can be uh, conducted for the uh, persons those who are suffering from mental disorders like uh, schizophrenia delusional disorders so these uh, the particular people those who are suffering from this type of disorders will have little bit of difficulty to adapt to the new situation or adapt um, as before like you no know, to move on with the things as before so uh, here psychotherapy will help uh, this particular patient to adapt the things in a better way to accept the environment to accept the family members to accept the near and dear ones or uh, to accept the uh, problem what that particular person has and go on with the things in a better way then only we can have a continuous form of psychotherapy so supportive therapy is uh, like improves the social functioning and the coping strategies that is very important for any other person who is suffering from any other difficulty it is very important that we help the patient to cope up the stress cope up the situations okay once the person is aware that okay i am uh, having a difficulty what i have to do and sup suppose uh, there is a person to push or motivate that this is what you have to do and this will help the you for in difficult situations naturally that person will Will have an improvement, and later, later stages also the person can cope with the problems in a better way. And supportive psychotherapy is one which helps the, for this particular activity. So uh, there are many uh, techniques given here in your text. Some of the activity, some of the techniques of uh, supportive therapy is holding and containment. That means you are uh, including that person. Okay, the, you you are sure you are showing your commitment towards the client that okay um, I am with you. Okay, don't worry, I am with you. So that is what holding and containment. Uh, the provides a point of stability and security within his or her otherwise disorganized world as we know that uh, as we were discussing isn't it that um, uh, this can be uh, uh, the disorder can affect 
or the patients may have, or the patient those who have severe disorders will have difficulty to accept the thing and here the role of uh, the uh, counselor or the therapist is that you're holding okay you're giving a sense of security you're giving a sense of uh, support or attention towards this particular client that is what holding and containment and uh, the people having you knowing that you are there they will be uh, they them can calm them when they are under stress so often in the in this therapy the best intervention is to listen and to do nothing rather than to do something that is ineffective or even destructive okay so the best part is that uh, the, your your uh, your commitment is towards listening the situation listening uh, the particular client as, um, helping uh, to accept the situations or making them understanding giving psychoeducation all these will come under psychotherapy then genuineness of course there is uh, nothing to explain on this um, this is one of the value of uh, any person that you must when you are in a profession when you are practicing something it is very important that you must be very very sincere honest and open explanation so that is what i was just telling you that it is uh, the responsibility of the uh, therapist uh, to give psychoeducation okay psycho what is uh, what is this particular disease about how you're going to cope up the situation what is the role of your uh, what is your role in the society you know how you're going to get back towards your normal condition now uh, this um, uh, medicine plus uh, medications plus therapy will help you to lead a normal life all these type of educations can be given or explained by the psychotherapist then advice uh, like you know um, uh, more frequently uh, people approach for support therapy usually has limited coping skills so therapist uses this technique here the therapist gives advice about the treatment how to seek help all these are explanations psychoeducation advice these are all interconnected okay then of course encouragement as i was telling before encouragement is also one of the important factor where uh, the therapist if motivates okay here follow up is very very important just in one meeting you cannot uh, um, bring out all the uh, um, uh, result in a better way or any interventions can all the interventions will be successful i cannot say i think the most important thing is that follow up once your meeting is for 45 minutes the next follow up you have if the condition of the client is, uh, uh, is there's a requirement of uh, um, and, uh, very um, frequent follow-up sessions it is very important that we give the appointment to the client to meet uh, at least uh, two days in a week or after a week in the con according to the condition of the particular client we have to fix the follow-up sessions and here encouragement is very uh, like encouraging the statements about the client's action enhancing the self-esteem boosting uh, the morale of uh, the particular uh, client or boosting that you can do better you can all these positive uh, pro prompt or uh, positive uh, responses will help the particular client to uh, um, bring um, a particular client in a better way then improving uh, social support okay so social uh, support uh, whoever is connected with the client uh, it is very important that their support is important their motivation is also important their attention is also very important because here the client uh, may feel uh, uh, will have a attention seeking tendency okay or uh, uh, like sometimes the, uh, the client may have guilt feeling or uh, the client may say that okay i'm good for nothing i cannot do now now i have uh, i now i'm uh, i've become a uh, mental patient uh, how how can I continue my work in a better way? All these um, confusions and apprehensions will, uh, like, will have a battle in the mind of these particular people, of these particular clients. So, uh, the social support system is very, very important in the form of family, friends, uh, relatives, uh, uh, or uh, other prof other those who are working with that particular client. Or the or the push of these all these people will help the client to improve the social support. Then catharsis, you know, you have come through the word catharsis, that is to lend, to vent out, to vent out, okay, to have a ventilation, to burst out the things, uh, to uh, like whatever the suppressed thing is in the uh, client, less, uh, slowly and steadily, the client will think that I have to share to the other person uh, whom I can trust and uh, I'm very sure that uh, the, the uh, uh, like the 
the to one whom i am expressing the uh, my uh, my uh, uh, whatever the clarifications or my issues will be kept confidential and i will surely give a i will surely get um, uh, some any in, uh, some intervention to cope up with the situation and that is called catharsis or to vent out ventilation vent out to let out the steam go positive uh, the next is positive reframing positive it is a technique used in uh, supportive therapy uh, that means it is helping the client to give a new positive meaning to the given behavior naturally if uh, one uh, like we uh, the, uh, the uh, particular person gets into any sort of anxiety or depression or any other severe mental disorder is because of uh, like uh, hectic um, uh, traumas or certain situations which the particular person becomes unable to cope up with the situation and that is what the particular person slowly slowly gets into the disorder okay so here i uh, so um, uh, maybe the person doesn't have an outlook towards uh, a positive attitude so here uh, the therapy is trying to build a positive framework so that the client can accept the situation okay i can also perform the duties in a better way i can also have this the same uh, better condition like other people have so this is how we are bringing uh, we, are, we are giving a positive uh, <coughs> we are putting that particular client in a positive circle so these are some of the important techniques used in supportive psychotherapy okay so hope you might have got some idea uh, how to uh, start with the things how to go on with the therapy isn't it so that is what psychotherapy is a little bit as i said a flexible sort of thing uh, just uh, you if you start talking in a positive way the particular client will get uh, lots of confidence and uh, will uh, will trust you okay um, and so whatever the particular the therapist is expressing or interacting uh, or talking to the particular client the client tries to accept the things okay the thing is that you have to be very genuine you have to be very sincere and whatever the activity is being done by you you should be committed towards that that is what more is uh, that is more important and psychotherapy is a little bit of a simple thing flexible thing where we can go on with the things in a better way okay so basic strategies of supportive therapy first is that formulate the case formulation is focused brief of brief conceptualization of the client or situation based on the assessment we have to um, uh, understand about the case then be a good parent patient therapist relationship is the core of supportive psychotherapy so here the relationship is very very important uh, the rapport building skill is very important the interaction skill is very important eye to eye contact is very important uh, the act to accept the client in a, uh, in uh, the situation what uh, the particular situation the what the particular client is in you have to accept the situation and accept the client in a better way okay um, uh, then uh, you have to show empathy also you have to uh, like all these uh, techniques uh, is like you know, uh, shows will help the particular uh, psychotherapist to get along with the client in a better way that is what be a good parent the supportive therapist constant constantly assesses the patient developmentally with respect to the later strengths and deficits then foster and protect the therapeutic alliance as we discussed earlier the relationship between the client and the therapist is the core of psychotherapy it is very uh, important that we will try to build a very good rapport with the client the next strategy these are some of the strategies or some of the intervention techniques where you can have with the client manage the transference this is also very crucial area you might have heard what is transference it is uh, um, there is uh, two types of uh, transference and counter counter transference it is uh, uh, like an um, uh, transference uh, the client uh, when there is a good relationship between the client and the so and the therapist uh, the client will have some sort of attraction towards the, uh, so the therapist and uh, the particular uh, client will connect to the therapist in so like in a different uh, uh, like uh, like a, of a brother or like a sister or uh, the 
a good friend he had in his childhood or a good uh, um, or a sister that particular client had in uh, in the particular client's childhood so the particular uh, this is and it is transferred it is a projection of something towards uh, the client towards the psycho uh, therapist or the therapist okay so transference means it is a distortion of patient's perception perception of the therapist even though beginning therapists tend to think of transference as consisting of negative feelings toward the therapist here uh, transference means there are two types of tra transference positive transference and negative transference okay so positive is that uh, if the particular client just sees in you as a brother or a sister or a good friend or a mother uh, so and um, uh, the particular client had uh, had a good attachment or a good uh, sense of uh, understanding uh, of between these members so he will or he or she will uh, see a sister or a brother or a friend in you and that was that the particular uh, in before uh, this uh, the client had a good relationship with all these family members and actually whatever the same feeling and a sense of happiness will have towards you the particular psychotherapist also and if you whatever the assignment is given or whatever the advice is given or whatever the interaction is being done uh, the particular client will readily accept whatever is told by the psychotherapist because he uh, the particular client is has a special sort of attraction towards the psychotherapist and that is called transference and that is called positive transference there is a negative also if uh, the client is not able to include the therapist and uh, and um, he may have little bit of of a little bit of uh, like aversion or some sort of uh, difficulty to uh, to accept the particular uh, particular therapist and um, he will relate a person who was uh, like a father who was a drunkard or uh, the friend who ditched a particular client so if it is uh, the particular client will have a negative transference towards the psychotherapist and the uh, uh, so in that time uh, the treatment or working with the client becomes a little bit difficult so it is very important that you will have only a, a professional relationship you have to manage the transference okay so uh, here uh, like some of uh, supportive therapy uh, we were discussing some of the strategies isn't it Be why these things I have uh, shown in the slide because these are some of the important thing what you need to have okay what you need to apply uh, as when you work with the client now we'll see some of the skills supportive therapy competencies okay so um, knowledge skills and uh, attitudes these are some of the major uh, thing that a uh, psycho, uh, psychotherapist need to have okay knowledge as we know that we must equip with the updates we must know what to how to deal with the client or understand the client all these are very uh, important when you listen all these things it, uh, it see it you will uh, the, uh, you will perceive that oh these are very simple thing i have uh, uh, the competency or i have uh, that uh, ability to understand the client but each and every client may be different the client may have its own confusions own difficulties and um, like uh, knowing that particular client in a holistic way sometimes becomes difficult but you have to develop a skill of competency knowledge uh, okay understanding um, and uh, uh, patient therapist relationship is very very important as we said okay and uh, that is all about the knowledge you also have to have some uh, uh, knowledge on how to deal uh, in a professional way with the uh, particular uh, client uh, all this and skill apart from knowledge you we need to have good skill uh, supportive uh, uh, like establish and maintain therapeutic alliance uh, proper diagnosis and assi assessments is very important uh, we have to accept the client in a better way where if there is a need of uh, uh, keeping the things confidential we have to show our skill of uh, like you are uh, you are maintaining confidentiality and uh, you have taken the you have to, you must have the skill to take uh, the particular client in confidence that whatever you, uh, you the, it is told by you will is correct and uh, you will be moving in that particular path itself and it is not that you are uh, um, like um, um, you are speaking something but you are not acting the same what you preach you are not practicing that will give a negative impact and that you must not you should develop a skill of uh, genuine uh, empathetic feeling etc okay and then as good treatment goals should be formed in the interact in a 
uh, direct and uh, non-threatening manner. It is very, very important. Sometimes what happens is that we get irritated uh, because of the long, continuous dialogues of the client being um, uh, put upon us or shared by a particular client because particular client wants to vent out everything, isn't it? <clears throat> we were saying that we need to have a catharsis. We'll provide an ambience to have catharsis. So, but naturally, the client will share uh, or would like to express many things. Sometimes it is not connected to the particular uh, particular client, but the, when it starts uh, sh uh, sharing all these things, we have to. It is uh, it is that we have anyhow we are, we are you are before the client. You have to attend the client. So it is sometimes what happens. Uh, we may get irritated. It is not. We have to be very much calm. We have to be mature. We have to be patient. We must be patient while uh, we are there with the client. That is what interact in a direct and uh, non-threatening manner. It is means sometimes what happens we get irritated, irritated, and uh, sometimes we share a word, dialogue or an interaction uh, which is maybe not pleasant, maybe because of the uh, wrong uh, notion about of the client towards anybody. Okay, so that that becomes uh, a difficult point where we also uh, react. But it is said that when you do the support therapy, you must be very calm, patient, or uh, should not have a non-threatening uh, uh, tone of voice. Then you have to respond to the patient and give feedback and advice uh, when appropriate. Okay, so these are some of the uh, simple tips, but it is very, very important that will bring a healing in particular client. And that is what you are, you are going to do, isn't it? We want some sort of intervention. We, we want to see a change uh, in the client in a better way. And uh, that is what our commitment lies. So here are some of, these are some of the simple techniques. But uh, when you work with the client, I don't know how many of you are uh, practitioners uh, or uh, at person you are working or you, uh, during your field work, you might have experienced all these uh, affairs. Okay, so... Uh, in any in, in in future also in uh, now you are planning to move towards uh, this profession these tips will help you to build a proper confidence in you and self esteem and you you will be having a sense of satisfaction that whatever the work you are going to do uh, whatever work you have done okay you have uh, you have achieved a good outcome and all these will help in future uh, future in, in your future profession also then attitude is also very, very important uh, skill, uh, empathetic. We were discussing, isn't it? Sensitive to sociocultural uh, and socioeconomic issues are also very important. Uh, sociocultural, you're giving respect to their culture, uh, the diversity what we have in our country. Okay, it is not uh, we are dominating our culture or our customs and traditions or whatever. I have learned, I have to, um, I will be expecting the same from uh, the client who is sitting before you. It is not like that. We have to respect their culture all these things are very very important you have uh, so uh, these are some of the the skills what you need to have uh, uh, with in psychotherapy i think say so, psychotherapy is a little bit of more flexible and it is easy it is easy to work but uh, it will take uh, many sessions it uh, i think even uh, if uh, the particular person is uh, not having that severe issue, but uh, working with that particular client, will need, you will need uh, many uh, like follow-up sessions. So hope you have got an idea about um, uh, this, uh, how to go on with the psychotherapy. Okay. Next is cognitive behavior therapy. These terms now it has become very familiar to you. I know that cognitive behavior therapy, CBT, um, last uh, in last classes also, and the other uh, resource persons also might have uh, talked about the cognitive behavior therapy. Cognitive is it is, uh, the, per it is the perception or uh, the way the particular uh, person has uh, uh, understood about a particular matter, isn't it? Sometimes uh, that goes negative or that becomes more severe and it is uh, the particular client is unable to handle the situation and that becomes a disorder. Okay. And that is what uh, to um, have a proper understanding about what the particular person has perceived. Because if the perception is wrong, naturally that will affect the behavior. That is, goes in hand in hand. If the perception is uh, negative, naturally the behavior what we see 
the explicit uh, uh, in an um, open uh, this one for um, environment that also will be a negative because why this particular client is performing in a negative way because whatever the particular individual has perceived has given wrong result or wrong notion or wrong uh, what uh, some, maybe one or two incident might have uh, um, been wrong but the particular uh, client will connect all those things with the things that had already happened and whatever the he will have or he will or she will have uh, much difficulty to accept in a better way and that when the then when this situation goes beyond the control of that particular uh, particular person the, there is a need of an external help and that is what uh, the external help uh, through external help or uh, this situation is uh, uh, the particular professionals are trying to bring control okay it is very important and very difficult also to change the cognitive level or change the attitude whatever the particular person has learned that show uh, that is shown in behavior so it's a multiple tasking uh, therapy we have to uh, clear about the cognitive distortions also at the same time we have to attend the behavior sessions also isn't it Beha changes in the behavior also we have to bring changes in the behavior also so this is a uh, the yeah we have to undergo with the double therapy this is, you can support the therapy okay that is also uh, it's one of the major therapy itself but through uh, talking or if the person has insight it is easy to work with it okay but changing the perception sometimes may be difficult so again here also we need uh, many sessions uh, um, naturally you know is it many sessions are needed to work with the particular client those who are uh, have uh, those who are distorted in their cognitive cognitive power or uh, those who have perceived in a negative way okay and so in this um, uh, cognitive behavioral therapy is what how to go and get along with the people okay and what is cbt and so that uh, that is what we were we will be looking into okay so a little bit of some of the major uh, areas uh, i would like to touch on and uh, i will show the powerpoint cognitive behavior therapy so it's also a form of in short we can say that the cbt uh, there are special courses uh, particularly for cbt CBT therapy and um, we can uh, like we can be particularly we can uh, learn many skills and techniques um, in this uh, therapy and conduct the therapy in a better way so this is a form of psychotherapy that emphasizes the important role of thinking in how we feel and what we do that is what we were telling isn't it it is based on the ideas that are thoughts beliefs attitudes and per per uh, perceptual biases influence the type of emotions and intensity here also uh, cbt helps to solve the problems concerning dysfunctional emotions behaviors cognitions through a goal oriented systematic procedure it is in every therapy which is the therapy uh, we are applying towards the client it is very important that we need to have a homework of that we need to uh, learn about that particular client in a better way. We need to have a systematic procedure of what we are going to do. Then only uh, there is like an, um, a commitment towards the client. We are showing some commitment towards the client. So this cognitive behavioral therapy also says that it is a systematic procedure and it is designed to help people to learn and identify and monitor negative ways of thinking and i and i said negative the particular maybe some of the situation might have um, brought this particular particular person to think in this in a negative way and uh, that can that may makes a particular client to generalize whatever particular client um, uh, attend whatever client looks you uh, know the views or whatever is whatever everything will be seen in a negative way and that becomes sometimes this negativity will be under will not be under the control of that particular client and then issue becomes or the problem or the diseases this is uh, the particular person starts showing many symptoms of negativity um, uh, violence destruction all this and so here we can help the particular person with the cbt but changing the attitude or changing this uh, uh, the way what he has perceived is very very difficult okay 
but CBT helps to go at this. So the behavioral and as I said, if the perception is wrong, naturally the particular client will behave in a wrong way itself. Okay, so both have we have to work on both the areas. Uh, so behavioral and cognitive approaches focuses more on how human go about learning behavioral, emotional and cognition reactions and patterns. So the basic models of learning are uh, instrumental learning. Uh, the, uh, the detail has been given in the text instrumental. These are some of the conditioning theories uh, by Ivan Pavlov and Skinner, where they have said that um, we can help the particular people, person by modifying their situations, modif or give by providing new learnings. Okay, and this condition, uh, these are called instrumental learning. It is referred to as an open conditioning condi by giving some conditions in the stimuli and then changing the behavior of the particular person. Or, uh, or else we have we can go with the classical conditioning. Okay, this is also a form of learning. A stimulus requires the capacity to evoke a response. Okay. Then modeling, giving good role models, um, giving the examples of uh, excellence. Those who have excelled uh, in many areas uh, and uh, during their time also they may have, they had gone to, through different uh, uh, struggles, but they had overcome. So we can also help this particular client to say that even though we have lots of, or your perception, uh, your thought process is like in a negative way, but when you start working in this way, you can also achieve good result. So through mod are showing some good examples where they had achieved in a, they have excelled in their field of work. Okay, so here different types of uh, um, uh, models of learning can be applied in cognitive behavioral therapy. So what is the main of the aim of this therapy, isn't it? We need to know that why we are going to conduct CBT. Um, as I said, it is a combination of CBT, cognitive, cognition to change the uh, cognitive distortion and also to change the behavior. This includes both the, the twin uh, uh, areas, isn't it? Uh, dual, um, um, like, uh, you know, you are applying a, um, a dual intervention. So it is majorly... Uh, it aims to have an early decrease in symptoms. Early decrease in symptom. When you start, uh, when uh, the uh, when the particular individual shows in the beginning itself, uh, some technique is applied. The, there will be a decrease in symptoms. So and like exploration of vulnerability factors. The second aim in therapy is to explore and solve factors in the client's life and have made them vulnerable to developing mental health problems. That is what the particular person, maybe because of situation or life experiences, had undergone some trauma or some guilt feeling, which he had, which the particular client starts to um, register in his mind all the negativities. So here we are going to change. We are trying to change that uh, negativity. Then uh, also therapy, uh, the, client, the therapist should be very much skilled in cognitive therapy, uh, therapy techniques to solve successful programs that may arise which without needing the therapist to be present. Okay, so it's very important that you are molding the client in such a way that whatever situation comes in future, the particular client is able to cope up with the situations. Some of the behavioral interventions. It is like uh, the behavior intervention is changing the, you are trying to involve in the client to change the behavior of uh, them. And moreover, it will also take um, uh, some uh, like many follow up sessions uh, and different types of intervention models. So, behavior intervention focuses on changing a person's unhealthy and Problematic behaviors, actions, and responses. So we, it is the focus is not on why something happens. Okay, why something happens? It is not. But changing the process to prevent. Okay, whatever has happened has happened. Now you, we are not uh, getting into that. That why this happened, why that happened, and why, when this, uh, whether this happened again. No. Now the present condition is to be taken into consideration. The present condition. Okay, I'm giving thrust to the particular word. The present condition of the client is to be taken into condition, and how to change the behavioral pattern of that particular client. 
or the process to prevent or alter or replace with the healthier, more effective behavior. That is what we have to have a homework on this particular each and uh, it is very important for the therapist to do a homework, to assess the particular client in a proper way, to find out the techniques and strategies, how to help the particular client in a better way. That is why I said it is not going to complete. We are not going to find, going to find out a um, uh, success rate within uh, one or two sessions, but it may May need a minimum four or five, uh, five to ten, eleven, twelve sessions. It depends upon the particular uh, difficulty that particular situation, uh, particular client is facing with. So how it is treated? See, sometimes you can um, uh, negative th thoughts uh, can be a little bit replaced with the better ones. In this way, we can move along. And um, uh, but, and moreover, uh, like whatever we were seeing, isn't it? Some uh, um, therapies are related to it. You can also have an eclectic sort of therapy. You can mix some other therapy also, like group therapy. Okay, people with similar problems come and share their issues and how they have uh, introduced some coping strategies and they have got improvement. The same can affect in a better way towards the client. Client also starts feeling that if I will do, uh, if I go better uh, in a better way, I can also change uh, my behavioral pattern. So these are some of the things. So what is therapist style? Here the main, uh, I said, as I said before, I have taken the major areas of uh, like where uh, your intervention is important, uh, your involvement is important. That is why it is, the heading is given as therapist style. So how your style should be, that is what uh, it is shown, how you will have to perform yourself towards the person or towards the client who have distortions in their cognitive and uh, they have a uh, non uh, like acceptable behavior so it is said that uh, the therapy uh, this should be warm genuine and empathetic decisions about therapy should be made collaboratively based on the current conceptualization uh, which will have been shared with client at the earliest opportunity. It is important that we must have patience, we must be warm, we must be genuine towards the client. And uh, it is uh, like uh, what um, uh, the client needs, a uh, need of uh, what the present condition says and whether the client is ready to uh, handle the situation or accept the situation, then we are going to start with the techniques. Okay. Therapist considers, um, uh, okay, and uh, we are going to join also like solve the problem therapist is the assumes the role of a educator teaching the client about cognitive models that have been developed to understand the etiology etiology means causes and more importantly the maintenance of maintenance of the client specific problems So here yeah, the therapist assumes the role of an educator, isn't it? This simple term educator means we have to educate uh, in uh, many areas towards this, uh, towards the client. Therapist also is responsible for teaching uh, the client about the cognitive and behavioral techniques designed to elevate their problems. And relapse prevention. Hope you know what is relapse prevention. This is a common term used in the reaction centers or uh, you, you, when uh, the treatment is given for the psychiatric issues towards the client that uh, there should not be a uh, relapse. Okay, relapse that is going back to the uh, same situation in a severe way. So here also it is important that uh, uh, relapse prevention, we, uh, the patient must be prevented with a relapse. Okay, so here the uh, role of the therapist is that we have uh, to help the particular client with the difficulties that if, uh, if there is a relapse, again, the situation may worsen and then again, all the treatment has to be taken again and again. So, relapse prevention in, uh, in uh, cognitive behavioral therapy is very, very important. And in therapy, the end point therapy is not going to find such a free. But when they learn to inform the skills, that's very important for psychotherapists. Okay, as you also in the schools, and when suppose you have got an opportunity to undertake a therapy, we have to see that it is not the client is sitting free. But when they learn through 
cognitive skills to cope with the current problem that is more important and also the problems that could arise in future the we are we are developing or molding a client in such a way that whatever the situation comes before whatever the difficult situations come before the client the client must have the ability and confidence to cope up with the situations okay and that is what ending therapy means so cbt is successfully uh, used to treat variety of mental health problems okay there is an empirical evidence also there are many researches being conducted in cbt that different types of mood changes mood disorder uh, bipolar disorders anxiety personality all these we had discussed in the very beginning okay so personality eating disorder substance abuse psychotic disorders uh, these uh, cbt is used in individual therapy so in these uh, the disorders these are some of the disorders where many people are affected with and through cbt we can bring changes those who are suffering from uh, mood disorders or any sort of anxiety generalized anxiety or affected at different types of other uh, severe anxiety personality disorders eating here cbt so cbt includes many uh, behavioral techniques also that is what uh, we saw three learning techniques isn't it so through all these techniques so maybe uh, the, the therapist can help the client to bring a change in the particular client and move in a better way and the important thing is that therapeutic setting therapeutic setting is also very very important uh, the major uh, majority of treatment takes place in a comfortable office located either in a clinic or in a hospital setting so all these uh, tips are very important for you as a beginner okay so uh, and the ambience is very important a quiet and comfort place uh, there's so there must be a comfort zone for the client the client must think that okay i'm very much uh, safe here secured here i can open up any uh, my difficulties towards a particular therapist and so we have we have to provide a comfortable space for the client so in order to emphasize the collaborative nature of the treatment the client and the therapist will sit in a similar cha chairs either facing or at a slight angle to each other so we are sitting face to face or a little bit uh, angle like uh, slightly uh, maybe 35 degree uh, uh, angle um, uh, you are uh, sitting in a 35 degree so maybe 35 or 40 okay not more uh, tilted but uh, not slightly uh, not too much of uh, like um, uh, cornered but even though you are face to face but slightly you can angle yourself okay uh, so in that way the setting of the uh, setting is very very important when you conduct your therapy okay so these were some of the areas uh, we were given we had given importance that the psychotherapy uh, supportive therapy then the next was cognitive behavioral therapy okay next we will move on to the family therapy next we will move on to the family therapy so it's a very uh, common area um, uh, family uh, therapy or marital therapy isn't it everywhere uh, you know in, uh, particularly from the indian context we give much importance to the family uh, to uh, the people those who are married okay their un un union of uh, two individuals union a uh, uh, relationship between the other family members all these are very uh, crucial areas uh, where uh, much importance is given in our society is it it as compared to the other western areas in other western areas it is uh, naturally nobody asks about the family who are, who are there in your family how many family members are there they are not that much of concerned with the family family is a secondary concept uh, to them but from indian context we give much importance and as uh, uh, time passes isn't it there are many changes in the uh, globally we can see many changes many uh, changes in the attitudes of uh, the people and uh, one uh, uh, when there is a unity a union of a uh, man and a woman and that brings into the marriage okay if the um, uh, so, so it is okay the, everything goes in a honeymoon period everything goes well but sometimes uh, there will be an attitude changes there may be some changes in the ideas uh, or uh, some ego problem sometimes uh, the both the parties will have difficulty in getting along with each other in a proper way and that starts starts some uh, some issues in their relationship and it is not i'm not generalizing the statement but 
to few um, section of the society or a few percentage of the people will have difficulty in coping with the situation and uh, as uh, like um, the, the as the world has been of uh, so much has been developed with many technology with many other advancements there may be some differences in the ideas of the people also okay or uh, the uh, or the education the high level of education may have brought changes in the perception of the people in uh, like uh, uh, in understanding each and each uh, to uh, between each other understanding uh, between uh, we call as husband and wife there, there may be some sort of misunderstanding or one is not able to get along with the other one is not able to adapt with the other so that there can be many reasons where some sort of difficulty may appear among the, these people okay and that become that brings to um, a negative uh, result or that starts showing negative result in their relationship and they uh, they start uh, they will have a, a problem in understanding in coping with each other in getting along with the, each other and that brings sometimes to a separation or sometimes uh, to a divorce maybe many 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 anything can happen isn't it or they may be living in the same um, uh, roof uh, they may be living separately or they may have different uh, marital conflict in a in different ways maybe a silent uh, conflict maybe a, um, a loud conflict maybe different types of and so here uh, we see in the current scenario it is said that there are heaps of uh, uh, cases being lied in uh, different family courts um, uh, family court as you know it is a court where um, uh, the dealings of uh, marital distortions or marital issues are being dealt and the um, people who are in the family court is unable to deal with the issues because of so many cases uh, related to the marital issues is being uh, filed or registered okay here the our role of a counselor is crucial where the role, the counselor can provide a good therapy to the family uh, to the um, uh, uh, marital people, uh, those who uh, includes like husband or wife or the other family members who are related to this uh, this marriage. Okay, so here uh, mar the marital therapy, how it has come, the word itself, you know, marriage uh, uh, has given a term like marital therapy, isn't it? Marriage of union uh, of two, uh, one, uh, um, a man and a woman. Okay, so here. Marital therapy is uh, an exclusive set of uh, counseling uh, theories, therapy, therapeutic intervention, how to help the particular husband and wife to cope up with the situations or those who are related or will also be will get affected if there is a misunderstanding between a husband and wife. So how to cope or how to get along with this uh, situation and that is what therapy uh, sets okay or the marital therapy is said to have a good um, relationship between um, uh, the husband and the wife so here also um, we will be understand we'll be uh, getting to know some of the areas of marital therapy or family therapy so uh, family therapy is a branch of psychotherapy uh, as we saw psychotherapy supportive therapy cognitive behavioral therapy in the same way Family therapy is also a branch of psychotherapy that works with the families and couples in intimate relationships to nurture, change, and develop. And naturally, this is what I said before. Also, it is uh, it is not uh, an uh, individual alone, but it's a combination of many people. And when they they come together, there is a good relationship, and um, there is something a crack in the relationship that brings to a problem. So here, therapy. Uh, family therapy particularly focus on the families and the couples to have a good change and development. So it is said that profession of marriage, couple and family counseling is relatively new. Okay, it was traced, uh, this is just the evolution I would like to share with. Uh, it was uh, traced in 1940s and 50s, but it was not given much importance. And slowly and steadily in the 1970s and 1980s, little bit of uh, knowledge uh, uh, was developed among the people related to the marital or uh, family counseling. So if you see from the Indian point of view, mental health professionals in India have always involved families in therapy. And the person, renowned person Vidya Sagar, he uh, is credited to be the father of family therapy in India. 
so in your text there are many um, uh, like history um, uh, detailed informations have been given about the history of the family counseling <clears throat> so the process of marriage couple and family is based on several premises one is that person conducting the counseling are psychologically healthy the major things when when there is a when you go on with the um, uh, go on with the conducting the therapy it is important that the psychologically one must be healthy and understand their own families of origin as well second premise of working with the families is that counselors will not over emphasize or under emphasize the possible aspects or interventions third component of conducting the marriage couple or family counseling is that counselor to win the battle of strength, establish good parameters and which counseling is conducted and by letting the family win the battle for initiative we have to set uh, such a condition that each and every individual is involved they uh, they are aware of the conditions they are aware of the conditions and understand the situations here also i would say that it is uh, like it will take some uh, time as it is not necessary that in within one or two sessions <laughs> you are able to uh, get success with this therapy many follow up sessions may be have may have to uh, we have to may have to conduct many um, sessions wherein we will get some interventions and each year year also we need to have supportive therapies also there is a there is a need of supportive therapy there is a need of uh, quality behavior therapy because um, uh, there may a, a, a husband or a wife may have wrong um, Uh, attitude or perception, okay, towards any issue between them. So that perception to be removed. So here also we need different sessions to get along with the this problem. So uh, major steps in family therapy or family counseling is intake. Intake means initial information is gathered and <coughs> sessions plan is briefed. Okay, here. Uh, important is that each and everything has to be uh, taken into account um, the um, the life history or uh, the educational history the uh, the family history uh, the peer uh, uh, um, peer attachment or the peer relationship of particular husband particular wife all these has to be taken in a detailed way and then we have to uh, gather all the informations and then after gathering the informations we have to assess the history of the families of origin of both the parents of the family okay we have to have a talk with the family members also then we go on with the diagnosis after assessing all the areas of the husband and the wife and the other family members we get into the diagnosis part and making a diagnosis based on assessment and finally on structuring and functioning of these issues so family structure is very important uh, the genogram is very important you might have uh, come to know genogram it is said that three generation genogram is important that is to know about the relationship of each and every member how many members are there in the family what is the relationship uh, of those members towards this client all it almost it is said that three generation genogram is important but it is not possible but at least one uh, one or two genogram is important how the particular client is related to the family members or, or the about the father about the mother about the other siblings we have to take into account all this information so okay either in the case of any spouse or husband or a wife and it is very important to know about the subsystem okay so the, the per those who are related with subsystems means the other people related with uh, this particular family is also very important how the particular uh, family members are related to the religious institution how they related to the financial institution how they related to the neighbors how they are related to the other factors or relatives all these are taken so it is a it is a networking it is i can say that family therapy it is not a, 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 a just moving in a so slight away but it is a networking of a big a big network okay having a relationship or having connections with many many people and once we come to know when if there is a problem between a husband and wife or there is an issue in the family it is very important to get into the network of all these factors okay multi dimensional assessment is very very important then only we can move on with the intervention yes then uh, the other these are some of the major areas isn't it and steps then hypothesis formulation it is after taking after getting the diagnosis uh, hypothesis means 
some of the assumption comes into a assumption of many things. Okay, so according to the um, uh, according uh, to the uh, diagnosis or according to the assessment we had got, we have uh, we have formed coming to assumption that okay, if this is done, this can happen. If this is done, this can bring a result. Okay, so these type of homework is to be done by the uh, counselor. Okay. Then inter after coming um, formulating a hypothesis or uh, forming some assumptions about the intervention, the actual intervention is to be taken off. Okay, actual inter 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 uh, intervention is uh, so. This is as uh, uh, like we have only a two-hour session or only few major areas to be touched. But when you work with the client or when you work with the family, it is that we cannot um, limit uh, any uh, time modalities. Sometimes it may go to many sessions, okay, regular sessions. Then afterwards, maybe some break in the, the session. So uh, we cannot, cannot be sure that how far the session can be taken up. Okay, we cannot say. Some people, they ask us that how many, within how many sessions we are going to wind up the marital uh, issue. It cannot be said. Okay, we cannot fix a time. Depends upon the situation and interaction or the changes in the uh, uh, people. Okay, so it is very important. These things are very, very important when you work with uh, the family counseling or when you are in the family counseling or when you are conducting a family therapy. So, actual counseling using a circular question. Circular question means we, it is not, if uh, the, uh, the interaction is not only really, uh, fixed towards uh, the um, husband or wife, but those anybody who is related with these people have to be interacted with or to be uh, assessed or find out all the informations in a in a circular basis that each and every has to has included you have to make it sure that each and every person is included okay in certain cases it is very very important i remember a case where when i was in a counseling center family counseling center um, there was a um, uh, little bit of uh, difference in ideas between the husband and the wife okay they were um, yeah, yeah, the uh, the family had the couple had a uh, five year old uh, uh, daughter and they were living very happily but certain point of time maybe difference in ideas certain situations uh, brought them to have a difference in idea and they were having difficulty to cope with the situation so both husband and wife came to the center we had a, a good talk with the husband then we had a talk with the wife we are also had to talk with the child whatever how the child is like we were observing uh, then there was a joint session between uh, the husband wife and the child and we, we were observing that i was observing how far the child is attached to whom uh, the particular daughter is attached to okay but still uh, we we came to many uh, consensus uh, many conclusions were drawn up but still there were uh, some hidden agenda so what we did next is that um, uh, we had to call the family uh, other uh, in-laws in-laws of uh, um, uh, the uh, the in means the relay father father fathers and mothers of both the uh ball both to the husband and the wife okay and we had the separate talks with each other okay then it was not ended up uh, again there was many confusions some hidden agenda was there then we have to we had to contact uh, the other people the, the neighbors or the relatives of uh, these uh, people so that went this network was so, like no it was stretching into so much of uh, areas that uh, we couldn't uh, we were having difficulty to come into conclusion it was very hard for the counselors to find a correct um, prob uh, correct diagnosis what is the problem with that particular uh, family okay so here that is what we cannot restrict to one or two follow-up session maybe uh, at the end of uh, the session and end, uh, end of uh, the many follow-up sessions we may come to know that this is not the case the case is something else so that may again uh, um, bring a twist in the um, our counseling session so we cannot restrict so that will uh, so what i want to say is that it cannot the family uh, depends upon the case okay but we have to undergo good assessment good um, into a good assessment and good exploration of the issue then only we can go on with the proper intervention then later if they are able to handle the situation in a better way we can go with the termination and uh, follow-up is also very important after termination we can ask them for the follow-up we can give them environmental modification techniques we can give them a, a proper change uh, uh, change uh, change in the attitude uh, some uh, like you no know, all those things which are related to bring some happiness among them these type of suggestions and uh, situations can be uh, told to them so that they can get along in a proper way
client or whoever is related to the client so the beginning session may uh, last uh, see a session is uh, uh, the uh, minimum uh, maximum time not the minimum the maximum time a session can go is only for 45 minutes not more than that so 45 or may go last for one hour so that session comes to an end so i think maximum five uh, minimum five session is very very important and maximum it is unlimited it depends upon the case how far you can go along with the uh, problem okay depends upon the intervention and depends upon the changes in the uh, client so here the role and next is the role and functions of the family therapist i will show you the slide yeah the role and functions of the family therapist the family therapist establishes a useful rapport, empathy and communication among family members and between them and himself. That is very, very important. Uh, it is not only, as I said, it is not only the, um, uh, it is uh, nothing, uh, it is not only an affair of a uh, husband and a wife, but it is an affair of uh, family members as whole. Well. Okay. Then, um, he clarifies conflict by dissolving barriers defensive disguises, confusions, misunderstandings. So here the role of the therapist is to dissolve any of the objections, any of the obstacles, uh, or uh, also defensive disguises. So what sometimes um, the, uh, the therapist act as a defensive, like uh, to confront the situations, to confront to that particular, uh, uh, particular thing, whatever the wrong they have uh, adapted, that is to be, uh, that is to be removed. So that is what defensive disguises and confusions and mis misunderstandings to be removed. Transforming dormant or concealed interpersonal conflicts into open interaction and expression. That is very important from the side of the therapist. Transforming dormant or concealed interpersonal conflict. What uh, so they may be undergoing through a cold conflict, or we say that cold war, isn't it? They may, they may not express all the things, but um, uh, they may have lots of difficulties or lots of confusions in them. So uh, they, we are trying to build in such a situation. They are opening up all the uh, whatever they have suppressed. Okay, then lifting hidden interpersonal conflict to the level of interpersonal interaction. Interaction is very very important. Whatever they have uh, they have. Uh, acts adapted as a wrong attitude it is too very important that they must express it freely and we must give such an ambience or such a situation where they can express freely their attitude or the, the negative thoughts they have uh, inculcated inculcated in them or through experiences whatever okay maybe um, many of the cases may be right towards an opposite sex or uh, maybe some uh, wrong notion also but all whatever it is through interaction it is very important that all these are made in a uh, brought in a proper channel then neutralizing patterns of prejudicial scapegoating that 45 one part of the family while victimizing another part okay that is also your uh, we are we, we are bringing a balance between the family members also okay it is not that uh, one is becoming a scapegoat the other uh, becomes free it is not both the parties are equally important uh, in their in the whatever the issue is being undertaken both the parties and that is what the role of the therapist is that the, the role the therapist neutralizes uh, makes them understand that your role is, is important the family's role is important at the same time the opposite sex or the husband's role is important the, at the same time the wife's role is also important the uh, relative's role is also very important then only we can get along with the proper uh, family system or with the uh, we can solve the marital issue so here if you become the mediator you become the broker in between them to uh, pro uh, let them go in a proper channel so that is what utilizing the patterns of pre-judicial uh, like scapegoating then 
counter interacting, inappropriate denials, displacements, and rationalization of conflict. It is sometimes what happens when suppose the husband starts displacing or suppose shows some self uh, like defense, uh, uses some defense mechanism, and that may bring a problem towards the wife. Or wife may um, uh, project uh, have show some uh, sort of uh, projection or some sort of blame towards that particular uh, husband. Okay, or uh, some uh, they may have inappropriate denial or displacement. So here you are there or the therapist has to counteract or confront or make them clarify the correct aspects of the issue okay and that is what counteracting the inappropriate denial or displacement or rationalization what uh, uh, bringing a logical reason for any of the conflict making making a rational uh, i uh, uh, rationalize the thing whatever the thing is we have to give the correct um, uh, correct uh, uh, reason for that particular conflict or what is the uh, reason behind this issue and that is what you have to take the lead the um, therapist has to take the lead okay and uh, of course uh, the therapist has to provide emotional support to the family as well and also other um, other uh, roles are also there here the particular therapist serves as a personal instrument for of reality testing for the family that you are acting as a catalyst you are acting as a uh, op, uh, like uh, a person who like as I said, uh, um, uh, broker or a networker or a facilitator or an enabler, all these uh, duties lies in you as you are there to help that particular parties, both the parties to move in a better way. And also you are an educator, okay, you are giving psychoeducation, you are giving education on many areas, uh, you are uh, there uh, to uh, help them how to get along with the proper environment in a family. So there are many, many roles of a therapist uh, in this marital therapy. Okay, so these are some of the um, uh, some of the areas where uh, marital therapy, how you're getting along with the therapy related to the marital issues okay then we move on to the next unit it is models of counseling uh, this is all some of the repetition or itself models of counseling we were looking into different models uh, like psychological model albrinian model all these related to help the help the members Okay, help the individuals to cope up with the, not only the members, sorry, help the uh, individuals to cope up with the different uh, situations. So, here also it's a detailed um, uh, content given in your uh, chapter itself. So, it is uh, again, uh, you know that counseling, isn't it? Counseling is an interactive uh, process that is more important so we must have a flair of uh, understanding listening uh, speaking uh, having face to face uh, contact uh, or a face uh, fa or uh, good gestures postures while you conduct a counseling with an individual so it is an interactive process conjoining the counselor who needs assistant and the counsellor who is trained and educated to give the assistant. This is very, very important in counselling. You need to have competence in that. Uh, it, is, it should not be a fake relationship between the counsellor and the counsellor. We must have a genuine. This is what I have been repeating again and again because when you start working, you will come to know that uh, developing a good relationship is not that simple. Okay. So how you are going to have a good relationship with the person who is so new to you, he haven't known to you, or um, uh, you have not understood anything about uh, that particular client, how you are going to have a relationship. So this is what some of the things when you keep all, when you are prepared for everything, it will be easy for you to get along with the client, whatever type of person is before you. Okay, so you have, you will have many challenges. We cannot expect that uh, uh, the type of uh, individual uh, before you is every time okay or is with the same emotional uh, balance that particular individual may face different emotional imbalances also maybe because of some of the um, preoccupied notions it is not because a particular uh, person has uh, is uh, because of uh, starting because you are sitting before him may no not at all maybe because of the preoccupied notion or some of the life experiences that the particular client uh, the particular uh, individual has undergone uh, in uh, in uh, throughout his uh, throughout his or her 
life and now particular person has not got any confidence that how you, how the particular person is going to get any sort of intervention so these type of questions these type of um, question marks may be inside uh, the uh, particular individual so you are there to give assistance you are there to educate so for that you have to be very much patience you have to gain patience you must have you must train yourself in every whatever the situation is so all these lies in you how you're going to handle the situation okay so uh, there are as i said there are different models psychoanalytic model um, introduced by freud and um, freud has stated uh, three um, states of mind id ego and super ego um, when there is a conflict between uh, it means it is a child uh, child situation where whatever is this is accepted by the individual so whatever is seen he is happy with that or he or she is happy with the situation but it is little bit uh, works on the moral uh, this one uh, moral principle and uh, wants to uh, be on that ego it uh, super ego is again uh, like uh, everything uh, cannot be accepted uh, the particular individual may has his own uh, developments or own uh, calculation of uh, the whatever the thing is so when there is a conflict between ego and super ego there arises as a, there arises a problem and this is what we have to get along with in a proper way and to so to uh, uh, like to defend uh, between uh, this ego and super ego people have found many many self defense mechanisms like displacement projection denial all this so this is what uh, freud psycho the father of psychoanalysis sigmund freud has found out many of the areas okay so role of the counselor in psychoanalysis that professional who practice uh, this psychoanalysis plays the role of the expert they encourage here uh, when you are practicing this model we can uh, we can see why this is these models are important you can take some of the important things uh, developed by these experts okay to intervene to help the particular client whoever uh, who you come across with and so that some interventions will be there or some help can be given to you to this particular client okay so if you are if you are adopting the model of uh, sigmund freud it is uh, the say, says that it says that the analysis psychoanalysis plays the role of experts they encourage the client to talk about whatever comes to their mind especially childhood experiences so sometimes that is what he has introduced different types of uh, like you know um, uh, the things what has gone between uh, conscious uh, subconscious unconscious or uh, during the childhood if there is uh, sometimes um, the child my uh, during our interaction we may come to know that uh, the adult may express that during his childhood he didn't get the love of uh, and affection of the mother properly or father mother were in conflict so these conclusions will help us to find out the problem with this adult also maybe that the client this particular individual had some sort of lacking or fixation during his childhood that is why this particular adult is behaving like this in a now in his adulthood so we can connect some of the things so with that connection we can help the client so psychoanalysis also or the Freud's analysis says that um, uh, this can happen. So here, the counselor can have a talk with the client about the childhood experiences. Through that, we may come to know whether he had a negative, whether the particular client had a negative experiences of life, whether he had a positive. As I said, see, um, uh, simple. Uh, each and every person has many difficulties and we try to cope up with our own um, tactics isn't it but sometimes it goes beyond then only we need a external help so that is why we people come to uh, people approach the counseling centers so you know some might have uh, some hectic problem might have undergone or the particular uh, undergone by the client that is why client is approaching ex for an external help so during this time we can ask each and everything uh, the childhood experience may tell us why this particular person is behaving in a adult uh, uh, in such a way in his adulthood okay then create an atmosphere which clients feels free to express difficult thought and mainly all the the psychoanalytical model tells about how uh, the client can be uh, molded or how the client can be made expressive okay so um, these are some of the tips by freud and also some uh, tests uh, their psychological assessment can also be given by uh, certain tests like rochard's blots uh, 
uh, or uh, some uh, best uh, some ink uh, some like you know hypnosis uh, hypnosis he had introduced hypnosis like uh, relaxing the client uh, in a sleeping mode and then finding out each and every uh, uh, areas of difficulty or whatever has had been that particular la la particular person had uh, undergone through his life the particular person expresses all these things okay so these are some of the you can uh, you can take this as a model to help the particular client so some of the techniques of psychoanalysis are free association here the it encourages clients to speak their mind and say whatever they are thinking regardless of how silly unimportant good or painful it may be what a free association the client is made to express whatever the client wants to okay uh, in spite of his age or uh, any education or any any of the situation the person is free so if you are giving such a situation the client may express all the feelings whatever so through this we can pinpoint uh, pinpoint some of the areas where we come to know that okay this is what happened this is why this particular person is behaving in such a way in his uh, now okay that analysis of transference also as we said then uh, analysis of dream dream according to freud is a royal road to the unconscious so there are many things we can adapt from the uh, psychoanalysis uh, theory also but there are some limitations each and every uh, therapy or each and every uh, model has some limitations also in psychoanalysis it is said that it is time consuming and expensive uh, so sometimes we cannot work with the older clients then uh, cross cultural support uh, maybe um, uh, people may not uh, uh, like they may have a wrong view of hypnosis or any any other this type of uh, uh, techniques created by uh, freud this can be happened. So this was criticized by El, uh, Adlerian, um, like Alfred Adler, one of the Freud's followers, developed opposing views and rejected many of the views. So the other model is by Alfred Adler, and that is called Adlerian counseling. Okay, Adlerian um, way of uh, model, Adlerian model of counseling. Okay, he this Alfred Adler was an associate of. Freud itself, but because of certain, uh, uh, but certain uh, criticism or uh, some of the uh, some of the thoughts which was uh, which Adler was not ready to accept by which was developed by Freud, he um, the particular uh, um, person, particular psychologist had his own views and uh, ways to treat the people. Okay, so Adler uh, says that human nature is much more positive than uh, Freud's. Uh, thinking okay rather than being motivated by instinctual rise we must be in the present what see as i said uh, psychoanalysis uh, depends upon the childhood or in the uh, whatever had happened in the unconscious mind or the subconscious mind but this was supposed by angler angler says that you need not to, you need not have to point out the instinct instincts or whatever had happened in unconscious mind but what is present that is more important and looking into the present condition we have to give intervention that is what some changes in uh, views started okay so um, here, uh, uh, he, he, uh, his theory holds that conscious asp aspects of behavior rather than unconscious. This is the more important. What is going to the present or what is the particular client is facing difficulty at present? That is what we have to, um, uh, we have to have intervention or that is what we have to point out. Okay, the present condition. So here, uh, the role of the counselor when when uh, the when if, if if a counselor wants to adapt to this model what role is to be played that is what adlerian says that adlerian counselors function primarily as diagnosticians teachers and models okay they try to assess why clients are oriented to a certain way of thinking and behaving why the particular present condition is such a way okay so the counselors has uh, to uh, the uh, has to uh, like um, uh, have has to uh, find out all the uh, informations uh, going into the present condition so it is uh, that confront whatever the wrong uh, clarification wrong ideas has been noted by the client that is to be clarified and that is called confrontation then asking the question okay the counselor has to find out many things from the uh, client 
that is what adlerl says that okay so uh, we it is up to you you can adapt any of the model okay but we have to understand each and every model and this is what uh, all these uh, we have taken these psychological um, uh, learnings as a model for counseling and therapy and that is what you must understand okay. here also there are many limitations also then we have client centered approach we have uh, gestalt therapy existential therapy all these were shared to you last time also in uh, the book number 13 see if you go through book number 13 the same uh, approaches we had discussed so here also client centered as you know isn't it we are giving importance to the client so you can uh, you can adapt to that para um, this uh, learning also client centered approach you can uh, adapt that approach for your counseling sessions when you meet a individual uh, who has many uh, irrational ideas so you can focus on the client centered by giving client centered approach so the conditions for client centered is that unconditional positive regard it means a counselor accepts a client unconditionally you have to accept the client whatever the client is with any with uh, not giving any any conditions or any um, uh, born, uh, any uh, rules and regulations okay that is very very important and you have to be very authentic you have to be very genuine all these matters so these are the things uh, which uh, i have been telling you from the very beginning itself Uh, the next is gestalt approach you can also have a gestalt approach so so uh, see how many approaches we have learned psychoanalytic approach uh, then adolf adlerian's approach towards counseling client centered approach then the gestalt approach it is also associated uh, with the perception of completeness and wholeness whatever the indiv individual is facing you have to understand the present condition they uh, they also a little bit oppose uh, with the psychoanalysis that we don't have to go on to the uh, childhood or instinct views but what is the uh, present uh, what is the client is facing in at present that is what is more important okay so here man is composite of they say just an approach says that man is a composite of interrelated parts um, none of these parts like body emotion thoughts sensations can be understood outside the context of the whole person so just an approach emphasizes here and now that is here and now what is happening now that is more important and that is what the individual needs also isn't it what i am facing at present the condition i have to uh, get rid of this my uh, uh, difficult situation and have to live a healthy happier person isn't it so we have to work on the present condition and not what had happened in our childhood or anything else so that is what just an tells here also uh, like um, the role of the counselor is that the principal is that a principal is at present now okay present tense is more, more important so here some of the techniques for gestalt counseling is that uh, you can have exercises uh, take some of uh, the common like uh, you know empty chair confrontation then you can also have a good uh, open interaction some of uh, the uh, some of open interaction since sensitizing the client all this includes in uh, gestalt also next is existential existential counseling the next approach is existential approach see so many sessions so many approaches we have learned isn't it client centered is an important one gestalt counseling is important the next is existential and uh, does we cannot avoid uh, the psychoanalytic also that is also very important because the personality of the individual uh, it will help to find out the personality of the individual through the childhood experiences or uh, through the behavioral patterns when the particular person was a child okay so that is also very important so all these approaches i think mix of many approaches are also very good when you work with the client to help the client with any of the problem even okay so uh, like existential uh, uh, approaches uh, very unique see you have to exist whatever is there you have to cope up with the situation uh, you have to uh, exist in the world 
okay so importance of anxiety importance of values importance of freedom all these have to be taken into consideration the per, in an individual existential uh, approach says that we have to enjoy whatever is existing us okay we have to enjoy the condition whatever it is we have to um, uh, utilize or we have to give importance to our values we have to, we have we have to give importance to the freedom of what we have got so all these approaches are very very important people from their lives by the choices they make they have to make they have the right to make decisions they must enjoy their situations all these are uh, it is said by existential uh, approach existential focus is on the freedom of choice and the action that goes they view people as the authors of their life okay we are the we have uh, see when you work with the client when they say that oh i am i am not at all interested in uh, uh, living now i have uh, i have nothing uh, i have nothing gained i have lost everything but it is not we have to make them that if you are a, if you are in the world you have to exist okay you have to exist in a better way whatever the situation is that you have to cope so in these type of interaction is very very important in existential approach and this is what existential approach tells us that um, friendship self growth all these are very very important we are like no Uh, we have to have self esteem we must read uh, we must reach to self actualization we must enjoy each and every um, way of the life all these type of uh, interactions should be there uh, in the, when you are uh, applying existential therapy okay so here the counselor serves as a model how to achieve an individual's potential and make decisions we have to live in present recovering a personal past existential counselors do not use any psychological test as uh, like um, uh, freud used this rosa uh, rosa's test or uh, inglot test here uh, it is not needed in with through interaction through uh, uh, confrontation we are um, changing the attitude of the individual okay some of the goals are like uh, responsibility awareness freedom all uh, these you are going to achieve existential counseling so this is also one of the good counseling approach if you are working with the client okay so the other is a behavioral approach with it is as it was already uh, known to then reality therapy is also very these are the therapies which we had discussed in the last classes so still so i'm not going to into the deep uh, and simple in simple terms it is there in your text also okay so i'm winding up the session